Hello and welcome to this presentation. I'm Caroline Jessen, Assistant Head Teacher, and I lead the options process at New Mills. It may seem very early to be thinking about options, but over the years we've found that the more thought that goes into selecting and applying for option courses, the more likely it is that children are happy with them. Please take a listen and if you have questions about the process, even book them in to ask them live on November the 18th, email me on the email address that you can see, encourage your child to discuss their options with their tutor or indeed with their class teachers at school. So the first thing is to know what year 10 and year 11 will look like for your child. They'll study lots of subjects, but not all of them. This is their opportunity to begin tailing their studies towards their future goals. The courses on offer at New Mills are GCSE courses, VTEC tech qualifications and technical awards. All qualifications have exams to take. The technical qualifications tend to have more assessment as you work through the course than the GCSE ones, which is known as controlled assessment. Some GCSE courses have no controlled assessment while others have a significant proportion that's assessed in this way. This controlled assessment used to be called coursework. After year 11, your child will be moving away from New Mill School to post-16 study or employment with training. After that, they might want to study at university. It is worth spending some time to work out what pathways they may want to take as this might inform which courses they would like to apply to study at this stage. At this stage, students often ask, what will I get at the end? In the past, there was the A star to G grading system, which we all understood. This has now been replaced by the nine to one grade for GCSE qualifications and distinction star, distinction, merit and pass grades for technical qualifications. You can see how they line up on the screen. Currently, grade four or a pass is a pass at GCSE and vocational um, and grade five is a strong pass or merit is a strong pass. We don't know what the future holds and these boundaries may change in the future. The advice we give to students is to aim as high as they can and get a five or more if it's at all possible. Don't settle for a four. In the qualifications your child will study, there are more exams and less coursework than there used to be. In addition to that, the amount of knowledge and skills needed has increased. This means that your child needs to be revising from day one of their courses, which for their course subjects was actually at the beginning of year seven. So what can they actually choose? Everyone will study English. That's English literature and English language and complete exams to earn them two GCSEs. Everyone will study maths, which is one GCSE, and everyone will study science. For the science, it's their choice how much. They can choose to study combined science, which is a mixture of biology, chemistry and physics, and earn two GCSEs from that. Alternatively, they can select separate sciences as one of their option courses. If they do this, they will still study biology, chemistry and physics, but do more of each and earn three GCSEs, one in each specialism. So everyone studies English, math, science. Everyone will also study PE, which isn't examined, and student development. In addition to their core subjects, your child will study four option courses. Their first course needs to be which EBAC subject they want to study. EBAC subjects are French, German and Spanish, history and geography and computer science and separate science. They will need to choose one of these and it has to be a language that they're already studying if they choose the language. Once they've chosen their option choice for EBAC, they have three additional choices. So four in total, the EBAC option plus three from this list. The EBAC courses are shown on the list in red and non-EBAC courses in black. Your child can choose any subjects they like from this list, three of them. At this stage, it's worth understanding what the UK government calls the full EBAC. 
this isn't a full separate qualification, but it's a recognition for students who study certain subjects. If a child wants to get the full EBAC, they need to study a humanities subject, so history or geography, and a language, Spanish, German or French. So at the beginning of year 10, your child will embark on four courses leading to qualifications in addition to their core curriculum. But how do you begin to help them work out what to apply for? They and you have access to several sources of information, the school website, teachers, the internet, family, maybe they have older siblings or friends in a higher year group that can tell them about subjects. Using these information sources and talking a lot will help. The more you discuss options with them, the better it is. We would advise you to look to the future. You might want to have discussions about further education courses or university courses or careers they'd like to pursue. It's unlikely that they'll know exactly which career they would like, but if they do have something in mind, it's worth starting there and working backwards to determine if they need to take certain courses at GCSE level or not. If they aren't sure which direction to take yet, it's worth looking at any pathway they might be interested in, then applying for a broad spectrum of courses to ensure that they don't close off any future pathway. We will support our decision making through a whole process of events that I'll talk you through in a minute. Before I do, there are some things that you need to put in your heads when deciding which courses to apply for. Basically, encourage them to choose for the right reasons. Don't choose something because they like the teacher or their mates are choosing it or they think it looks easy because none of them are or someone else has told them to. They need to be choices made for the right reasons because they will be studying these courses for two years. The options process that we'll go through together this year has already started. It started with an assembly and a letter you will have received explaining the whole process. This term will do much of the information gathering stage. We've held a taster day where your child was able to sample courses that they hadn't studied yet, like construction and media. There's the virtual information evening on the school website and staff are available to discuss in school. You'll receive an electronic options booklet detailing a wealth of information about the courses on offer and how to choose what to apply for. The booklet will also contain how to fill in the options form and the link to it. In tutorial time, your ch child will work on option courses and careers and you will receive a report showing their GCSE forecasts in each subject. This personal information will help you and them decide which subjects they're likely to get high grades on. This needs to be considered alongside other factors like their enjoyment and future pathways when deciding which courses they'd like to apply for. The options form at New Mills is electronic and the link for it is there. It needs to be completed by the 17th of December. Any early completion of this form won't make any difference, but late submissions might. So please do get it in before the 17th. When it comes to filling the options form, it asks for the, their EBAC selection first and then five additional subjects in order of preference. We need this many so that we can do our utmost to ensure that every student gets four out of their six choices. For example, if a student chose French as their EBAC and then these five subjects in order of preference, geography first, separate sciences, media, health and social and history, they might be very lucky and end up with the French as their EBAC and their top three. They might end up with French as their EBAC, but actually two, three and four preferences. They might end up with French as their EBAC and choice one, but four and five from their list. So when you're selecting those courses, we need to be sure that they will want to study all of them. Another example is shown here. So this student wants to do computer science as their EBAC and then hospitality and catering, music, construction, engineering and art in that order of preference. This child has only selected one EBAC subject, which is fine. They might get in. OK, so they might be lucky again and get their top courses. 
However, if there's too many students for one class of this EVAC subject and not enough for two, they might not get into computer science in this case. The way we select is by looking at their five hours reports in that subject or the closest subject to it, the combination of options that they've applied for and their behaviour and attendance records. If they're not successful, they will be placed in an alternative course, but that will be discussed with them. Again, so whatever that EVAC course is, they might have some of their favourite subjects underneath. They may end up studying choice three, four and five. Another example here, this student has chosen history as their EVAC. We've got various courses here. There is another EVAC subject there is French. They might be very lucky, get their top courses. They might get a combination. Or if that top EVAC course is full and they don't make it into that class or classes, in that case, we'd select the EVAC course that they've chosen lower down their preferences list to be their EVAC qualification. I hope that information has been useful to you in understanding the options process that we'll be going through. As I said, if you want to ask me any questions, either book in on November the 18th, email me on the address that you can see, or encourage your child to speak to the teachers in school or their tutor, or indeed email the teachers directly. Thank you for listening.